from the Oak Wall Studio in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, this is Jesse Oakley III, and welcome to the Oak Zone, where we provide positive words of wisdom for the happy people. Now, normally I would give my words of wisdoms Monday through Friday, but for a special Sunday, I have the Sunday morning chat series for the Oak Zone. And in the chat series, I interview a plethora of people that are making big contributions to their respective communities, whether they are public speakers, whether they're authors, whether they're cancer survivors or yoga instructors, you name it, I pick the people that get the chance to interview that are making a big difference in their community. And you know what? You're in for a real treat this morning. When I think of underrated professions, there is one profession that I think about big time. That is teachers. When it comes to teachers, how could you get all these professions without the power and the work of teachers? How could you get engineers without teachers? How could you get truckers without teachers? How could you get teachers without teachers? It makes a big difference. And when these teachers are very underrated in my opinion, and they deserve more respect, more earnest, and more willingness than they allow. And if you believe me, I believe they deserve more money too. <laughs> but nevertheless, I am here with a person that I know very well for a long time who is in the teaching field, and her name is Lauren Lee, and she is a teacher extraordinaire. So hello, Lauren, how's it going? Hello, hello, it's going wonderful. How about for you? I'm doing very good, very good. As long as I have the happy people with me, I'm A-okay. Yes, happy people. Yes, exactly. Now, do you have any other thing else before we start? No, I guess let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's chat. All right. So the first question I have for you is, how long have you been a teacher? Well, I've been teaching, this is my 11th year. I feel like I've always been a teacher. Um, I grew up, my sister is 18 years older than I am, so she was out of the house when I was growing up. So I had my stuffed animals and my Barbies that I had a, um, a play chalkboard that I used to teach. So although I've been teaching professionally for 11 years, I've been teaching for a lot longer. All right, that's awesome. And what, is, I know, what inspired you to actually become a teacher? Um, one of my inspirations to become a teacher was definitely from having great teachers. Ever since I was a little girl, I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher. And I had so many wonderful teachers and I wouldn't dare to start naming any because I might miss out on some. Mm -hmm. But I had great teachers and they inspired me to become teachers because they were, and I love history as well. So having great teachers and then having those history teachers who made history come to life, they were my, de my biggest inspirations. Also, it's kind of amazing that today would be the day that um, we had this interview um, because one of my number one teachers, my favorite teacher, she actually passed away yesterday. Oh. And she was one of my, you now talk about inspiration, she was definitely probably number one on my list because I um, I went to the same college that she went to. I taught the same subjects that she taught, everything. And so I said, I always wanted to be like her, except for she was a Delta and I was going to be an AKA. Ooh, I thought they were the sororities. Alpha Kappa Alpha and Delta and the D, the D sorority. Yes, but she definitely, she was my number one and I'm, she's going to be missed, but she was an extraordinary educator. I tell you what. If you have an inspiration, a mentor, when it comes to the teaching department, the mentor really does matter. Wouldn't you agree? All right. So let's go ahead and go to the next question. Definitely. Okay. Yes, what, definitely. What level of students have you taught in your career? Well, um, I've taught high school and middle school, and I've also been a um, program director for an after school program for elementary school. And I actually, I was a substitute teacher for elementary school. Um, I would say that my love is definitely middle schoolers. It takes a crazy person to deal with middle schoolers, and I'm definitely that person. And so I love middle school. Middle school is 
not, no day is the same. Every day is totally different and you don't know what you're going to get from day to day. Um, I love middle school. High school would be number two. And then I, I doubted myself because I didn't think I would be able to handle elementary school, but I actually, I enjoyed it. I really did. I love the students. I love working with the teachers. So I, and I, it's opening up the door because my plan is to become an administrator. So I'm excited because I've had that experience at all three levels. So I would feel comfortable at any level as an administrator. Oh, that's, that's truly awesome. My goodness. Now, when it comes to being a teacher, what were some of your challenging moments you had as a teacher? Um, some challenging moments, I think, would be when I first started, I was young. I was 23 when I had my first job. So it wasn't a big age difference between myself and my students. So that was some growing pains because it was one of those situations where I had, you know, the girls were like, you can't tell me what to do because they thought we were the same age. <laughs> so that has been a challenge. Another challenge that it is could, you could say it's a challenge, but you could say it's positive. I don't know how to cut it off. I dream about it. My husband says in my sleep, I'm teaching. This happens all the time. I'm teaching and I'm talking loud in my sleep and I'm always doing a lesson or uh, talking about students. And another way I can't turn it off is because my, I care about them. I love them. They're my kids forever. And so then when you have situations where, you know, they don't, where their home is, is not so great. It, I don't cut it off at five o'clock, like some jobs where, you know, you can leave out the office and, oh, I'm done. It's like, sometimes I can't, I can't turn it off and they're just constantly on my mind and I'm just thinking about them and, you know, hoping that they're all right. All right. All right. Now, what were some of your best moments that you had as a teacher? Um, one of my, I would say one of my best moments, we have um, standardized testing here um, in Virginia, where we have across the nation, but it's called the SOLs, the Standards of Learning. And I had students, and I had this happen multiple times, that they had never passed SOL. So usually when they got to testing season, you know, they were down, they weren't excited about it. But I've had multiple students that by the time they got to me, and that was middle school, so seventh and eighth grade, um, I was able to help them pass their first SOL in their educational career. So for me, that was just like a great feeling to see that child be so happy and amazed that they were able to do something. And then just to see, like I had one, she was screaming and running all over the school and everybody was excited and cheering for her. So just to be a part of that child's success, it just gives me chills thinking about it. Ooh, I tell you what, it, it's basically what I believe Booker T. Washington or George Washington Carver said this, if you want to light yourself up, light up somebody else. Definitely, definitely. And I try to do that every day. And even with virtual teaching, I thought it was going to be a major challenge, but I'm already making those connections with my students. So that makes me feel good as well. All right. No, no better feeling, ain't it? Mm -mm, not at all. Not at all. You just gave me some goosebumps here. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them to myself. But that's how you know that it's, the, it's, it's true. It's authentic. Exactly. Now, if you met a younger person that wanted to be a teacher, what advice would you give this person? Well, first of all, I would tell that person they need to be sure that this is the career choice for them because teaching is definitely is a work of heart. It's not a, a career where you go into that you have lukewarm enthusiasm about it because if you do, you're not gonna last. You won't have any longevity. You're gonna burn out and you're not, you're just not going to make it. So I would definitely tell them that they have to be sure this is their career choice for them. I will also encourage them to go to a college that specializes in producing teachers. That's a major thing because it's, uh, I, I would, I didn't go here, but Longwood here in Virginia, mm -hmm. Longwood, mm -hmm. when I say they have some of the best teachers that I've ever had and work with Longwood, they produce excellent teachers. So I would definitely tell the person to um, research their um, college as well and make sure that they go into a program that, um, you know, is well known for their teaching program. And you got to have a love for children. If you don't love children, 
Mm-mm. It's not the career for you. It's not the career for you. You have to have a love for children and be also be able because not only are you influencing your children's lives, you're actually influencing their entire families. So you definitely have to have people skills as well. You def that you definitely do. I tell you much. Without people skills, what else is there? Right. Happy people too. Exactly. There you go. Happy people. <laughs> All right. Now. Is there anyone that you would like to give a shout out to at this moment in the, in the Oak Zone Sunday morning chats? Sure. I would like to give a shout out to my baby, Elena London Lee. Miss Elena is my three-year-old who is full of energy and the light of my life. And I'm also going to shout out my husband as well, Alvin Lee Jr. Mm -hmm. and my stepsons, Trey and Ashton. I love all of you all. Oh, my goodness. It's good to have that love and that family right there. Now you see out there in the YouTube land, you see all the happy people that are going to watch this video. If you see all the happy people that are out there from all over the nation, let alone the world, what words of wisdom would you give for these type of happy people when it comes to the profession that you're in? Well, every year on my syllabus, I always put that the dictionary is the first place where you will find no, let me get it right. You're going to have to edit this part. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. The dictionary is the only place that you will find success before work. So definitely in order to be successful, you have to put the work in. And that's with anything that you do in life, anything that you do in life, you have to put the work in and be willing to work. I tell you what, there's no need to edit that. You, you said that very well and you'd cut off looking like very professional that you did a fantastic job here and for myself and all the happy people all over the world we thank you for taking the time out to actually do this interview about the importance of teaching and you being a teacher extraordinaire like yourself <laughs> thank you very much all right thank you very much lauren and if you want more sunday morning chat series or positive words or wisdom for the happy people all you have to do is go to youtube Type in my name, Jesse Oakley III, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for more positive words of wisdom for the happy people. On my YouTube channel, you will see more than 200 videos. That's right, 200 videos of positive words of wisdom that's going to get you through your day, your week, your month, and possibly your year. All for you, the happy people. So without any further delay, I'd like to wish all of you happy people take care and have a great time. And until then, Bye-bye, happy people.